And my name is Daryl Kwao. Thanks for staying with us. We begin with the subject of inflation uh, this afternoon. The director of the Institute of Statistical Social and Economic Research, uh, Professor Peter Korte, has commended the Bank of Ghana for fighting, uh, for its role in fighting inflation as well as ensuring relative stability of the city despite the challenges facing the economy. According to him, the fiscal policy of the central government has failed to live up to expectation, a situation which has pushed inflation high and created some instability within the Ghanaian economy. He was speaking at the APSA Bank UPSA Law School Quarterly Banking Roundtable. Yes, more. According to Professor Peter Korte, the Bank of Ghana has so far done well in helping to bring stability in the Ghanaian economy. He's, however, worried the fiscal policy of government spearheaded by the finance ministry has been weak. The rule is when you see overheating, you see exchange rates moving in a certain direction, then the central bank has no option than to intervene. So that is devoid of any political intervention and, and it avoids the time inconsistency and policy reversal problem. And that's what we have seen with our central bank uh, so far. So, so far, the Bank of Ghana has served us very well, um, but it cannot be only uh, monetary policy. The current challenges we find ourselves also requires fiscal policy. And, and we think that ought to be mentioned. Speaking at the same event, Director of Research at the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Philip Abredu Otu, outrightly dismissed the misconception that the central bank's inflation targeting framework has failed to be effective. According to him, the framework is the best tool so far for helping to check the rise in inflation. We at the central bank feel there's some misconception out there. And when people hear inflation targeting framework, they think all we do is just chase inflation uh, and that we have nothing at the back uh, as far as real sector concerns are, uh, 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 as far as real sector uh, indicators are concerned. But we do look at both inflation and, and real sector. But I think first and foremost, the IT framework is a monetary policy strategy. Uh, if you look at it from that perspective, it becomes easy to understand what is going on here at the central bank. Jacob Brobe, acting head of markets at APSA Bank for his pact, expressed concern about the use of the inflation targeting framework at this time of challenges in the global economy to fight inflation. According to him, this has forced interest rates to go up. Given the high level of inflation that we are seeing uh, across the globe, uh, inflation as its highest in US, Europe, uh, Ghana here we are at about 18 year high. Uh, in the process, we've seen various central bank interventions and questions that comes to mind is uh, our central banks across the globe are going to continue to chase inflation. And if that is the case, then what is going to happen to uh, interest rates? Uh, currently, we've already seen interest rates leading to one day, for instance, move from around 13% uh, in March uh, to around 24%, right? So the question is, um, is that the sustainable path for, for the country to take? Now, Newmont Ghana has indicated its commitment to partnering the government to drive improvements in the country's economic programs. This follows successful sale of 3,500 ounces of gold to the Bank of Ghana in its first ever domestic gold purchasing program launched in June 2021. This made the gold mining giant the first mining company to respond to the central bank's initiative, which is a very significant milestone in the fiscal history of the country. Here's Kwame Adokofor, vice president in charge of government relations and strategic development at Newmont Ghana, speaking to Joy Business. We feel pleased to have been able to partner the, the Bank of Ghana as it sets out on its uh, domestic gold purchase uh, program. It's very much in line with our values of partnering government uh, to create value and improve lives. And um, this is very much in line with our, our mission. So we do feel pleased and we feel happy that we've been able, after collaboration and discussions with the Bank of Ghana, to come up with a model which can be replicated and leveraged by other uh, large and small scale gold producers uh, to enable the central bank to procure pure refined gold and pay Ghana cities for it. 
and thereby boosting our reserves and uh, enhancing the resilience of uh, the Ghana city. Well, last year, Newmont Ghana paid a little over 1.869 billion cities in taxes and carried interest to the government as part of its fiscal commitments in 2021. The amount comprised corporate income tax and mineral royalties. Mr. Adokufo says the company will continue to invest in the country as it seeks more exploration. Pays for gold or normally pays for gold the U.S. dollars. We uh, accepted CD payments from the Bank of Ghana in line with its objectives of using CD payments to buy gold, thereby uh, boosting the, the reserve, the gold reserve, in, in a sustainable way. So let, let's look at your contribution to the national economy. I know you've paid taxes, uh, you've expanded to create more employment for Ghanaians, especially your host communities. In totality, what has been your contribution to the national economy? I can confirm that last year we paid around 1.9 billion Ghana cities in taxes and royalties and dividend. And the first quarter this year alone, we've paid 547 million cities. So if you simply do a simple extrapolation, we are sitting good to probably beat last year's target. We are a leading leading contributor to the um, fiscus. And you're watching the marketplace. The Ghana Tourism Authority has begun to ex an exercise to clamp down on unlicensed tourism sector businesses. Now, these include hotels, restaurants, uh, pubs, and car rental businesses. The authority says the exercise is to bring sanity into the industry. Joining me to discuss this, uh, Emmanuel Frimpong, who is Executive Secretary of the Ghana Tourism Federation, an umbrella body for businesses operating in the tourism space. Great to have you this afternoon. Uh, Emmanuel, first, has this exercise come to your attention and what do you make of it so far? Um, good afternoon, Daryl, and uh, very good afternoon to your cherished uh, viewers. Uh, well, uh, it's, it's an annual uh, activity that the GTA, who is the regulator, takes. Um, so it is nothing new to us, um, but it's, it's an exercise that we, we also approve because we have too many people who are or entities who are operating without the appropriate license. So we, we, we welcome this uh, request. Okay. And so as you point out, this is not the first time uh, the Ghana Tourism Authority is carrying out this exercise, uh, which makes me believe that even though they are clamping down, there are some more people who are finding a way to set up businesses and not licensing them. And so um, maybe then the approach hasn't been effective. Is that the case? Uh, it's, it's not really about the approach. It's about people finding ways and means to survive. So if you do it today, then next day somebody is looking for opportunity to um, operate and, and live. And, and don't forget, it's not just uh, the restaurants or the tour operators. There are other individuals who are also doing certain businesses that require uh, registration from the GTA. Uh, and especially do, during the COVID, mm. a lot of people mm. took advantage of, of the fact that those who had registered were not in business and they were having people coming in into the country. They were taking them around without any registration. So um, um, now that we've opened up, it affords us the opportunity to get them on board, not necessarily closing their businesses down, but to regularize whatever they are doing, to get them to register with the authority and to even register with the, um, uh, the registrar general to regularize every activity that they are doing. Don't forget, uh, recently we had the national security sending letters around and uh, in making us aware that Ghana uh, um, is, 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 is at the verge of uh, being attacked by terrorists. Mm. So we need to get these people to be regularized so that if somebody comes in, we know where we can track that person. And, and, and this uh, exercise to regularize the operations, uh, I'm just wondering, is it the case that uh, the businesses don't know what they have to do 
And shouldn't that uh, be the emphasis? Now, I'm, I'm just wondering, in this space, there are not so many businesses, and we are trying to promote a domestic uh, tourism agenda. Uh, genuinely, some of them don't know what to do. Uh, because I have encountered a few uh, that you ask them, say, oh, we didn't know we have to register. Because uh, the person has his laptop or phone, and he's saying that um, if you come to Ghana, if you want to come to Ghana, come. I'll take you to this site or that site. And somebody pays the person. The person comes into the country. They take him or her to a site, takes their money, they're gone. And some of them have been operating for years, so they don't even know that uh, they have to register. And there is also another part of it where, uh, by regulation, uh, you are required, if you are a tour operator, you are required to have an office before you operate. And we live in a, in a, in a situation, um, in an environment that now people don't really need a physical office to register their businesses. So this is another leg that the, the regulator has to look at it. How do we get people who don't really want to have an office to regularize their businesses and operate? If we are going to use a physical office as one of the requirements for somebody to register, then we are not going to get a, a lot of these uh, young people who are into some aspect of tourism uh, to register their business because they don't have a physical office. So there has to be a way around to get some of these ones registered and regularized. Good stuff, and I agree. I mean, we want to uh, promote our tourism industry. We want to set the high standards so that when people come, uh, they, they can have that. But today, our top story has been on inflation. The Bank of Ghana, uh, no, the director of ESA is saying the Bank of Ghana has done well in checking uh, or fighting inflation. The government has to do more in terms of its uh, fiscal policy measures. Uh, so I want us to talk about inflation a bit. Fuel prices, as you would hear, are going up. Transport fares are also going up. And so I know businesses in your space are struggling to stay afloat on one side. But I've also been thinking about the domestic tourism agenda and how that could be affected if people cut down on spending because of the high cost of living. Is this something you're concerned about? Very much well, Darrell. Um, naturally, if, if you are struggling to feed yourself, your family, your loved ones, why would you even think of going to pay money for pleasure or leisure? Mm. You wouldn't want to do that. So, and when it becomes um, expensive to travel from one end to another, then obviously you don't want to do that. We are looking for opportunities to cut costs so that you can take care of your family. So it's really a concern to us. And, and for the tourism and hospitality sector, you realize that most of our activities, uh, we have people coming from other countries or people moving from one end to another. And we also depend so much on fuel we depend so much on importing certain items. So when it becomes expensive because of inflation, then obviously it becomes even difficult for us to operate. And the client or the customer or the tourist who is also supposed to come, because that person is also finding it difficult to take off his personal needs, it becomes difficult for that person to visit our facility. So it's, it's really a big deal for us. And so how are you working around it? Uh, I'm just wondering. Ah, well, uh, for now, what we are doing is we are engaging, uh, we are looking at the opportunity to see how best the, most of the things that are imported, we can get them locally, and also the possibility of reducing our rate so that people can still visit. And then we are also looking for opportunity to engage the government to see what are the government's plans for the tourism and hospitality sector. So far, we haven't heard anything from the government as, as far as our sector is concerned as to what they are doing to support um, the sector. Well, I, I had a few friends tell me that when they go out, uh, for instance, Friday night to uh, share some drinks, uh, you usually wouldn't calculate, but now when they go, they have to calculate to ensure that they are within budget. Thanks very much, uh, Emmanuel Frimpong. He is uh, Executive Secretary of the Ghana Tourism Federation. I appreciate your time with us uh, this afternoon. We'll speak uh, hopefully sometime soon. And you're watching The Marketplace. The Ministry of Finance has signed a buyer's credit agreement with the Export and Import Bank of India to establish an Assembling plants within 18 months, the 24.9 million city facility will assemble tractors, 
backhoe loaders and fabricate agric implements. According to the Finance Minister, Ken of Riata, the plant will make machineries more accessible to actors along the agric value chain. Here's more in this report. Export Import Bank of India is funding government to establish an assembling plant to make equipment for the agric sector. Speaking at the signing ceremony, Finance Minister Ken of Riata disclosed that training will be given to Ghanaians to empower them in operating a tractor assembling plant. Government in India, represented by Exim India, is providing government of a 24.98 million facility for the establishment of an assembly plant for tractors, backhoe loaders, and fabrication agriculture implements. And this is to be done by Action Construction. So the intention is to uh, bring farm machinery within the reach of small and marginal farmers, uh, popularizing agric machinery such as power tillers, tractors, backhoe loaders, power reapers, power pumps, paddy threshers, among others. The implementation of the project will start after the signing of the agreement in line with the project implementation schedule, the construction and installation of the project's plants and machinery and other civil works. It's expected to be completed within 18 months, including training from India. Resident representatives of Export Import Bank of India, Ganapathi Selva Kuma, said the agreement signed is to strengthen ties between Ghana and India, as well as develop their quick link between both countries. India has made great strides in agri agriculture sector. And uh, uh, we have reached a kind of expertise uh, in this area that we can contribute or even our technology and uh, our equipments are up well. It can perform quite a lot and uh, can provide at a very cheaper rate compared to any other uh, 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 agricultural similar companies which can offer. And therefore, this will bring a game changer for the people of Ghana. Meanwhile, Director for Policy, Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation Directorate at the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, Richard Chumisi Ankara, lauded the initiative and described it as timely to support the Planting for Food and Jobs program and mechanization agenda. These initiatives, apart from the huge investment on the government, pays, also have also challenged the frequent breakdown of this machinery due to over reliance on foreign products that are not able to adapt to tough terrain, lack of spare parts, where farmers are, those who own the tractors are not able to assess. It is in this regard that the Ministry of Food and Agriculture sees the establishment of an assembly plant for the local assembly of agricultural tractors and machinery as a major contributing factor to the success of the Planting for Food and Jobs program. Action Construction Equipment Limited, an Indian assembling company, is expanding into Ghana. President for International Business Division, Naresh Chandra Soral, reveals the projected production capacity of his outfit. This is 4,500 tractors a year and uh, 600 back loaders and 6,000 uh, disc harrow and disc plow and uh, 3,000 uh, tripper trailers. That's the capacity. In six months into the year, and prices of food items continue to see a sharp rise. Traders in various markets have been widely affected. They lament the high cost of maize, corn dough, and cassava dough. On today's edition of Joy Business Shopping List, Beverly Broom speaks with some traders at the Malamata market. Welcome to another edition of the Joy Business Shopping List. We are back to Accra after bringing you two episodes from the Ashanti region. Today we are the Malamata market and we want to gauge the prices of maize, condo and other foodstuffs here on the market. Join us if you are preparing to go for shopping this weekend. That's the Ulum. One Ulunka. It's That's much. 12 mm. But right now it's rather 14 kilos because of the cream of the fuel. Mm. Uh -huh. 
But I see that we have different cars. We have the yellow cone and yeah. the normal cone. Does it, is the price all the same? Oh. How much is the white one? Well, the white one is 13 cents. Mm. 13 CD for one ulu. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like this one. Like this one. 13 CD. Mm -hmm. But mm. before, how much were you selling? Oh, before is 12 CD. Mm. 12 CD for one. And, and you are telling me about how very soon the price of maize will go down. Yes, because of the new maze. Uh, if it started, the old one will go down. Because some of the people like the new one. Uh -huh. So, small time. Like maybe ending of this month or next month, we will get some, the new ones. So, you will let the price will come down. You, you said something that I want you to repeat. That this whole market, one of the cheapest things. Is a uh, uh, maze. If you grant this one and you cook it, the whole family will be okay. There's 15, 14 cities and the 12 cities. If I rather grant this one and I cook banku or akwele, a lot of people will be okay. That's why I'm saying that. <laughs> if you ask anybody, anybody, that you want to go to Sister Efe, you rather see me. Mm. And I would rather look you very much. You will enjoy me. What, what shall I say? We are going to go Ghana. And I will 25. We will 30. Mm. I will go We 30. Mm. 25. Mm. And see, now, you have to back it there. First, now, what do you want to say? We 20 Ghana. Mm. Oh, 15. Mm. 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 Sisi, yeah. Sisi, yeah. Own to me, Shani, sir. Because the blue no. 7 million. Mm. Mm. Until we show where, sir, apply, sir, now. I was who in your show. The blue no boy didn't do. Yes, so, bro, by, by this time, time I hear me, sister, the blue no boy didn't do. Until I share with 25, 40 Ghana. Mm. Now, 30 the no, sir. 30 the no, sir. 30 the no, 20 Ghana. And I have 15 CD. First, a blown year where oh, when you block a toque, a bear 2.5. 2.5, a bro, a bunny for beba from quite 25, and I 2 million, 3 million, and I 35. Out there, I say, this year, the air and con is okay. My air for your phone, quick chicken because you have 2 million, you have 8 million. Now, a bee won't pay a bee won't see. You must last year before Christmas, no, not a broke a toque, not a ton is it. 5.5. No, this is a call. This is a call. 7.6.5. Getting to any 7 million. Mm. Mm. Because a bien in the Kotokoni is a price. Now, you're sure about your money. About your money, you will be. About your money, you will be. About your money, I know the old bar, paint and we be a chair where twelve cities. That's what they say. They say we. That's what they say. Banchi for no so. Lolly fair. What they say? Omo ba lolly fair. Ni boy di, ni boy di, ni boy di. Inti first ne to mito koto ko ne be five hundred and a three hundred, four hundred. They say inti ni sa. Obe to a one point five. And I could talk on one point five for no in an honor into a be by a share where thirty gun. They find a patch on Santa obey two city beer, oh, my man, and one on the first number. So much first, uh, fifteen city, ten city. That's your shopping list for this weekend from the Malamata market. We hope we've been of help to you as you prepare to go shopping this weekend. For Joy Business, I am Beverly Broom. Uh, and this is an indication uh, of what to expect as you make your plans to head to the market uh, this weekend. But even more worrying is the fact that fuel prices are going to go up. And that means that it's going to impact on the prices of food items because they are going to be transported. Now, more firms are today expected to increase prices 
of petroleum products at the pumps is coming after the industry giant Total Energies took the lead by selling a litre of diesel at 13 cities, 50 pesos and 10 cities, 99 pesos for a litre of petrol. Now, many will be looking forward to the margin of increase from the market leader, Guel, and the other major players, Shell, because of their impact on the over 100 oil marketing companies uh, in the country. Meanwhile, the margin of increase for diesel may fast track the increase in transport fares by commercial operators. The Ghana Private Road Transport Union earlier this week announced that it will begin a series of public engagements before the adjustment in fares. But looking at the current developments, uh, transport fares could be increased from next week. And so that's what we'll be keeping our eyes on uh, for you next week whether or not uh, the GPRTU and other commercial uh, transport operators are going to increase their fares as uh, major uh, oil marketing companies increase uh, prices of petrol and diesel. So it's going to be hot topic for next week. We are going to keep our eyes on that for you uh, on the marketplace. And thanks for watching, everyone. There is more news on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. Uh, head there to get the latest news stories. My name is Daryl Kwao. Enjoy your weekend. We will be back same time on Monday.